Hello, Algebra 2 students. Today we're going to be covering the Unit 2 uh, unit activity. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with that. So go ahead and, and open up Edmentum and get to the Unit 2 uh, activity. Um, has this introduction here. Oh, I think I forgot to share screen. Here we go. Good. Has this introduction here, and you can read through this if you want. But we're going to go through everything, so you don't really need to. If you want to, just come over to page five, and we can start on the on the uh, assignment. Mod modeling polynomial functions. Jared is an intern at a real estate broker's office. He was asked to record data on the difference of the number of sales made each month by the whole team of realtors and the average number of sales made by similar broker's offices. After gathering the current year's data, Jared decided to include the previous year's data as well. Using all of the data, he created this function to model the team sales where X is the number of months since January when Jared began gathering data and F of X is the number of sales as compared to the average. Okay, so the number of months since January, so like, where, where zero is, that's at January. So what this graph is kind of saying is that at January, um, their sales team, Jared's sales team that he works for, uh, was doing worse than average of similar brokers offices by 13.5 sales. And then continue got worse. But then after five months, after five months, he started catching up. And after 10 months, uh, Jared's company was selling more than the average brokers from um, similar offices. Hope that kind of makes sense. Now, use the graph to interpret and match the appropriate intervals with the descriptions. Drag the tiles to the correct boxes. Not all tiles will be used. So the interval over which the difference of the number of cells is negative. So the interval where it's negative. Well, it looks like it's from here to here because that's below the x-axis. So it's negative from here to here. What is this amount? Uh, if this is 5, this is 2.5, maybe around 3, something around there. Ah, uh, yes, from 3, from negative 3 to 10. So from negative 3 to 10, they were below the x-axis. That's a negative. Interval over which the difference of the number of cells is decreasing. So decreasing is where the graph is going down. So it's going down from the, this is like a peak and it's going down as you go to the right to here. So it's decreasing. It looks from, maybe this is around seven. Um, well, here would be 7.5, right? So maybe around six or something, six ish. Decreasing, decreasing until you get to five. Um, um, none of these seem correct. I'll have to look at that later. We'll look at that later. Wait, what the heck? How come zero to 0 0.49? That doesn't seem correct. Yeah, that doesn't seem correct, but that's the answer they're looking for, zero to 4.9. Okay. Interval over which the difference of the number of cells is increasing. So increasing it goes from here and it starts going up. So from five and up. Um, maybe they're looking for this from 4.9 to 10. Interval over which the difference of the number of cells is positive. So that would be, it's positive here, from here to here, and also past 10. So they're probably going to look for this interval right here. Looks to be maybe this right here negative nine to negative three. So from negative nine to negative three, it was above the x-axis, so positive. Okay. 
Let's move on. The team's total number of sales is equal to the average number of sales at blank months from when Jared began gathering data. For this, they want the x-intercepts. So what are the x-intercepts of this graph? Well, this one's about nine, or negative nine, sorry, negative nine, negative three, and 10. So that's what they're looking for. The team's minimum number of sales this year occurred at approximately blank months from when Jared began gathering data. So when was the minimum difference in sales? Well, that was the lowest value, this valley right here, the bottom of this curve, which happened at five months. What are the factors of this equation representing Jared's function? So since it had an x-intercept at negative nine, negative nine, since it had an x-intercept at negative nine, there's going to be an x plus nine factor. Because if you replaced x with negative nine, that would make this zero. Okay. Negative three would produce which factor? And positive 10 would produce which factor? See if you could answer that. Okay. Hopefully you were able to see that the factors were x plus nine, x plus three, and then x minus 10. Use the factors of the function and the y-intercept standard form. Okay. Now, so our function, there's also going to be like a, an A in front. So this is like a, multiply, a multiplier. Now we don't know what this A is right away, but we can figure it out. And the way we do that is by looking at the y-intercept. So the y-intercept in our case is negative 13.5. So what we can do is we could say negative 13.5 equals a now it's since it's a y-intercept all the x values will be zero so this will be zero plus nine zero plus three and zero minus ten so for the y-intercept you replace all the x's with the zero so that'll give us negative 13.5 equals a times nine, because zero plus nine is just nine, times three, because zero plus three is just three, times negative 10. Zero minus 10 is negative 10. So that'll give us negative 13.5 equals, now let's multiply those together, nine times three times negative 10, that's negative 270 a. Try to get a by itself, you divide both sides by 270. So you'll do 13.5, sorry, negative 13.5 divided by negative 270. 0 0.05. So then you'll get a is 0 0.05. Then from there, we can have our total equation because our equation was this, f of x equals a, x plus nine times x plus three times x minus 10. Now we have a value for a, a is 0 0.05. So just replace a with that. And that gives us our function. Okay, Jared is also gathering data from a competing real estate broker's office. The competitor's sales were equal to the average number of sales uh, eight months before Jared began gathering data, and again, two and six months after he began gathering data. The relative minimum number of sales was lower than the relative min minimum number of sales for Jared's office. So in other words, um, this new function we're going to make has a lower um, valley to it. This one's valley was like at, it looks like negative 20 something, negative 27 maybe.
maybe negative 28. So we need to make it go lower than that. And it has these x-intercepts that's saying. So it has an x-intercept at eight months before. So that'll be an x-intercept at negative eight, somewhere around here. And also at two and at six. So two here-ish and six here-ish, okay? Um, so our Bs, these are gonna be our y-intercepts, or sorry, our x-intercepts. So one at negative eight. So one of them at, oops, at negative eight. Um, you have to highlight and then put negative eight. And one of them at two, and then one of them at six. Okay. Now we need to figure out an A. Let's just put, I'm just gonna put one here. And you can see the graph here. It's kind of hard to see what's going on with this graph. So what I would suggest doing is going down to this gear right here. Well, first let's zoom out a bunch and you can kind of see the graph here. Okay, we can see it's very squished like this way horizontally. So what we could do is go to this gear and we could change this. So for minimum X, we're gonna put that at negative 10 and then for max x, we could just put that as 10. And you see that make, makes it very much clearer. And you can still see the y coordinate, the y axis goes up very high still. Okay. Um, so this looks like it works. Notice it has an x intercept at 8, at negative 8, another one at 2, and another one at 6, right? So that's what we wanted. We wanted those three y and, uh, x intercepts at negative eight, two, and six. And we want the lowest part to go below the other graph we had. So this one, what its lowest part was somewhere around um, negative 28 or 27, something around there. Well, this one definitely goes lower than that because this line right here represents negative 50. Okay. So this one is good here. Now it didn't have to have to be one if you change this, like however, right? As long as it, as long as this lower part goes below the twenty somethings, okay? And you can see it definitely does, right? If you make a bigger, it'll go even farther down. If you make a smaller, you know, like here, a is probably too small, right? Because if you imagine this is negative fifty, negative twenty five will be around here. This is not low enough, so you need to increase that. Okay, so any A value, uh, probably around one, one point something, that'll be great. Okay, but these B, C, and D need to be exactly these values. Not necessarily in this order, but they have to be these values, negative eight, two, and six, because that's the numbers they wanted. Eight months before, two and six months after. Okay, and that's it. Um, I hope that made sense and it wasn't too hard. If you uh, have any questions, um, feel free to email me. My email is t-t-r-i-g-g -G at o-f-y dot o-r-g. And I will see you guys next time.